Hey everybody, welcome to Hockey Skate Down. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you want to join our hockey team, it's free. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell to all. Thank you all so much, and let's get started. There's been a lot of chatter recently about the Detroit Red Wings possibly being a trading partner with the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Vegas Golden Knights. The past couple of days, you've been hearing uh, uh, names, especially Max Pacioretty, Jonathan Marcheseau from the Vegas Golden Knights. You've been hearing uh, Detroit linked with, with uh, Tampa, with Tyler Johnson and Alex Kalorn. And, you know, there's still the way they can go to free agency. So, you know, let's talk about that in the video. I want to get into what they can do to upgrade their roster if they're looking through free agency, through trade, and look at their current roster now as Stevie Y did make some good acquisitions this offseason. So, um, you know, Stevie Y said in the past that he would consider adding another player to the Red Wings roster as the season gets closer. There's still lots of free agents available, and he said that before, and those free agents are still available now. And he also said that in another interview that they are willing to add from the trade market. So looking at the free agents that are still left out there, the big names out there, you know, you have Mike Hoffman, you have Granlin, you have Duclair, you have Vaughn and Hamannick if they want to add a defenseman. And then if you're looking for trade, like I said, those four players are heavily linked to Detroit. Uh, Pacioretty, Marcheseau, Tyler Johnson, and Kalorn. You know, do I think they may go more towards the Tampa Bay route as uh, Stevie Y is more familiar with those players? I think that may be the case, but, you know, there's a lot of chatter going around about Pacioretty and Marcheseau being that what um, Frank Saravelli said with um, those big four names going on the market with Martinez and uh, Fleury added as well. So, um, you know, looking at uh, Detroit's cap space, they have $9.54 million available. If they want to make a trade, they have additional picks this upcoming year. Uh, they have three second-round picks. They have two third-round picks, and they're missing a seventh, but they still have all their other picks. And 2022 draft, they have um, two fourth round picks. So, if they're if they're eating a lot of that salary, a lot less is going to go back the other way, as it would help the teams out because they're looking to add some, you know, free up some cap space heading into this next year. So, it's very interesting to do this this year. You know, I think a lot of teams that don't have a lot of cap space left have to make moves, where teams that have a lot of cap space want to make moves to try to get you know one of those bad contracts and a possible asset the other way. Maybe a good prospect, maybe a high-end pick for the following draft. So, have to wait and see with this. There's a lot of teams that have a lot of cap space. There's a lot of teams that are over it where they want to be at this point. So, um, this next month is going to be very interesting to see what these teams do, especially the Red Wings. So, looking at um, the players that are I, I mentioned, you know, Pacioretty has three years left at seven million per year. A left wing, 32 years old. Um, would he want to come there? I know he has some sort of trade clause where he has to okay the team he's going to. So would he want to go to Detroit is, is, is a question. Uh, March or so is another 5 million for four years. He's 29 years old, left wing, right wing. So he's a versatile winger. He's been dynamiting the playoffs the past couple of years. And, um, you know, all these players that I'm going to mention can still produce at their age they're at. Uh, Tyler Johnson, uh, four years left, uh, five million per. He's thirty years old. He could play left wing, right wing, center. So he's another versatile player. Uh, Stevie Y knows him very well. So um, you know, I think that's definitely going to play a key. I could really see Johnson being a Red Wing for some reason. Uh, Kalorn, left wing, four point four five million for another three years. He's thirty one years old. So if I'm looking at four key names being mentioned heavily with the Detroit Red Wings, I'm saying it's those four right there. Um, you know, looking at their lineup now, and I have a graph I'm going to show. It's not my lines. It's just something I saw that I wanted to just show because I like the visuals of the jerseys and everything. But, you know, looking at that first line, you have Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Manta. Second line, you have Fabry, Nemestikov, Ryan. Third line, you have Gagne, Filippula, and uh, Zadina. And the fourth line, you have Helm, Glenn Denning, and Ern. Now, I'm, I'm not exactly agreeing with all those lines because looking at these players in Cap Friendly and what positions they are. They're very versatile players. I've never seen a roster of forwards that every single member of the lineup is transitionable. You know, you have uh, Bertuzzi could play left, right. Uh, Fabry, uh, left wing, center. Gagne, center, right wing. Helm could play all positions. Larkin could play center, left wing. Nemestikov plays all. Uh, Val Filippola, uh, center, left wing. Glenn Denning, all. Um, looking at Manta, right wing, left wing. You have um, Man uh, Ryan, uh, right wing, left wing. Zadina, right wing, left wing. And Earn, left wing, right wing. So you got you. This team is all transitional. You can add one player and shift this whole team totally around. But you know they're not a bad team on paper. I think what Stevie Y did was add a more competitive element to this team. 
I like the Nemestikov signing. I like adding Bobby Ryan, um, character guy. You know, he played well at towards the end of the year when he came back from what he was going through. Uh, the stall trade I like. Um, adding a veteran presence on that back end would really help uh, these young players out, especially Sider, who's really playing really well to start this year. And, um, you know, I, I like what he's added in, in Stetcher and Merrill. I'm familiar with Merrill playing with Jersey. And Grice. I think he added players that are really going to help make this team more competitive, harder to play, play against this year compared to last year. So we'll have to see where it ends up. You know what, what's going to happen with the as the season goes on, but I think they're definitely going to take some teams by surprise, especially teams that might may take them for granted. So we'll see what happens this this year, and if Stevie Y does make a trade closer as this as the as we get closer to the drop of the puck. So comment below what you think about this. Do you think Stevie Y is going to grab one of these four players? Do you think he's going to head towards free agency to pick up one more player? Comment below and let me know. And as always, thank you for your time and watching this. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the Hockey Skate Down. Join our hockey team. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great night. Take it easy.